Hi everyone, I'm Nadia and in today's video my mom and I are working on a custom ordered sunflower set of a resin tray and coasters as a wedding gift. We have our molds out and ready and I'm going over them with some tape to pick up any small dust particles or fibers that have gotten stuck onto the silicone molds. We're using craft resin which we love working with. It's a one-to-one -one ratio by volume and it's very easy to use. It always leaves us with beautiful crystal clear results and you can use my code SUMMERGIRLDESIGNS to save 10%. I'll have it linked in the description. Before we mix in our resin, my mom here is going to show you how we reuse our Greek yogurt cups to mix resin. The old resin hardens onto the bottom surface and you can remove it with your hands. We mixed in equal parts of our part A and B resin and then poured it into that larger cup to stir together. We mix well for about 5 minutes and make sure that we're scraping the sides of the cup and the bottom of the cup as well. Then we poured it into two separate cups, one for me to use and one for my mom to use, and mixed a little bit more. Then my mom started to separate her resin into smaller cups to add in her pigments. She'll be working on the coasters and I'll be working on the tray and I went ahead and started to pour my clear resin into my tray molds. I used a silicone makeup brush to help spread the resin to the very edge of the mold and make sure that the whole surface is covered. We're going to be doing 3D flowers in the coasters and the tray will be a mix of fake flowers and 3D resin flowers. I am going to very quickly speed through this process just because this first batch of sunflower coasters that we did didn't turn out exactly how we had wanted them to. They turned out pretty but they didn't resemble sunflowers as much as we wanted them to so my mom gave the coasters another try the following day. You'll be seeing her mix in the pigments and working on the sunflowers the next day while I work on the second layer of my tray. So for now, I'm working on placing these three fake sunflowers into my tray mold. Before I place them into the mold, I dip them in resin first to try and prevent air bubbles. However, I did still end up getting a few air bubbles, which I'll show you later on in the video how I removed some of them. This first layer in my tray is a very thin layer of resin just to cast those flowers in place and to allow me plenty of room to completely cover them with resin in future layers. I went over them with a wooden stick to try and push out any air that has potentially gotten trapped underneath. I used a torch gun to pop any air bubbles and my mom gets started on her coasters. I think the biggest difference in this set of coasters that my mom is making now versus the set of coasters that she'll be making tomorrow is the amount of alcohol ink that she used. She used a fair amount of this brown and orange alcohol ink and she was expecting it to drag more into the center, but unfortunately it didn't do so, so those colors are very prominent in the final product. I'll show you guys a photo of how they turned out. They are very beautiful, but just don't really resemble sunflowers so much. So we are back the next day, again using our craft resin, and the first thing that we do is go ahead and mix that together, again mixing equal parts of the A and B. After we mix that together well, again we separate it into two cups, one for me to use and one for my mom to use. We mix a bit more just to ensure that every area is mixed well, and my mom separates her resin into smaller cups to add in her pigments and I start to pour my clear resin into my tray mold. The first pigment she's using is Liquitex's acrylic ink in the shade Yellow Medium Azo. She mixes the bottle well before adding drops into her cup of resin. Into that same cup, she adds Just Resin's pigment paste in the shade Titanium White, and she mixes that together. To deepen the yellow a bit, she adds Resin Pro's Color Fun Deluxe in the shade Oxide Yellow. Now in a separate smaller cup, she's adding Dupont's Alcohol Ink in the shade Mocha. She'll be using this brown alcohol ink along with her center detail instead of directly dropping it into the mold this time. So she goes ahead and adds these beautiful golden beads. and she also adds these very small black beads as well. 
followed by a little bit of this copper color metallic sand. In her next cup, she adds in Pinata's alcohol ink in the shade Calabaza Orange. And with this ink as well, she's going to be pouring it into the center instead of dropping it directly into the mold. Now she takes her yellow pigmented resin that she previously mixed and pours it into a plastic bag. She pushes it all towards one corner and will use scissors to cut off a very small amount. This is to pipe the resin and to have better control while pouring on the flower petals. Now that all of her pigments are mixed in and ready to use, she starts by pouring some clear resin into her mold. Then she pours her orange alcohol ink into the center. And next, pours on her flower petals. Then she takes her center detail mixed in with that mocha alcohol ink and applies it into the center. Now in the blank spaces of the flower petals, she's dropping in yellow alcohol ink. And she repeats that same process on her remaining molds. When she's almost done, I take her pigments and start to do the same process into my tray molds. We used a heat gun on the 3D flowers in the tray mold to help promote more movement. I made adjustments using the wooden stick and also used the wooden stick to help add on more of the yellow pigmented resin. We allowed that to harden and came back the next day. And here I am demolding. The lighting here is a little bit deceiving as this isn't the exact shade of yellow that they are, but you'll see that later on in the video. I did just want to try and mute down some of the orange that's in the center of the resin coasters and I wasn't entirely sure what the best way to do this would be so I started off testing out several different markers. I started with a gold marker and tried a yellow marker as well but I found that the best thing was to use this yellow acrylic paint by Liquitex. I used a small paintbrush and just went over the center area. This just tones down that orange a little bit and helps it to blend in nicer into the yellow. Now I'm going to be prepping the coasters for a top coat and I'm doing so by turning them over onto the back side and applying liquid latex. I get so many questions on my channel regarding liquid latex and I have a whole detailed video on my channel of how we top coat and why we use liquid latex and I'll leave it linked above here. 
but in short liquid latex helps to protect the bottom side of your piece while you're working with it out of the mold so any resin that flows over the liquid latex will catch and it won't cure onto your resin piece. I use a silicone makeup brush to help spread the liquid latex to the very edge. And regarding my tray, since I did put those fake flowers face down as you previously saw, it did have that green plastic bud sticking out. And to remove that, once the resin had hardened, I pulled that out and sanded down anything else that was sticking out. Now after sanding, I'm using an alcohol wipe just to wipe away any residue. And I'm going to be doing a layer of resin on this side to cover that up. So I added my liquid latex onto the top side of the tray so that I would be able to coat the bottom. But first thing is first, this surface has gotten a little bit messy so I'm just scraping off any resin drops that have gotten stuck onto this surface. We do use baking paper on our workspace which allows for super easy removal of any resin. And the easiest thing is just to get a tool like this and scrape it all off. Now that I don't have any more resin residue that could make my surface not leveled, I went ahead and started to place on cups, which I'll use to prop up the resin coasters and the resin tray. And once again, I'm mixing in craft resin. One of the reasons why we love working with craft resin because it works great as the base of your piece, but it also doubles and is great to top coat your piece as well because it is heat resistant up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. So you don't have to worry about using two different resins, one for your base and one for your top coat. Craft resin really has that covered. As always, I mix in equal parts of the A and B and mix those together well. When top coating, I'm very cautious to make sure that every area of the resin is well mixed, not to cause any problems in the top coat. I'm also cautious when it comes to the base layer, but even more so with the top coat. So as always, after mixing in the first cup, I repot it into a second cup and mix some more. Then I start to pour a small amount onto each coaster and use a silicone makeup brush to spread that to the edge and make sure that every area of the coaster is covered in resin. And if I need to add more, I'll just pour on some more resin onto the coaster. Once the coasters are done, I start to pour onto my tray as well. Again, I use that silicone makeup brush to make sure that it's covered the whole area of the tray. And we decided to add on a little bit of gold detail onto the tray, so I'm using these Chrome Mirror Gold Foil Flakes by Deepon. I added some into my cup of resin and then continued pouring onto the tray. And the next day, I removed the liquid latex. This part is quite satisfying. I use a gold adding marker to add a gold trim onto the coasters. Once the gold trim is on the coasters, they're pretty much done and I just need to leave them to continue their hardening and curing process and now it's time to focus on finishing the tray. So this was a wedding gift with customization, so I'm using my Cut machine to add customized text onto the tray. The Cricut machine comes with this app which makes it very easy to customize your text in any way that you want. And the text that I'm using is Josipa y David for the date August 14th, 2023. And I almost wrote that date down wrong. 
This is an order within Croatia where I live. I know a lot of my viewers are from America, so this date might be a little confusing. Once I had the text down, I selected my font. I really like this font, but it is a little bit on the thinner side, which can make it difficult to cut out later. So I like to use this offset option within the app, which I can use to make the font just a little bit thicker. I remove any excess text and stick with the one that I want to use and adjust the size. Now the text is ready to go and I just need to fill out a few more pieces of information to prepare for the cut. I need to type in the material and for some reason I always go to type in gold foil, which is not correct. So I am using an adhesive foil, so I go ahead and type that in. I adjust the pressure to more and get ready to load everything into my machine. So this is the gold adhesive foil that I will be using and this is the process to get it ready. I ran out of my Cricut tape which I realized that I don't even need because here I'm using painter's tape that I just cut into tiny sections and it does the same job. It just doesn't look as nice but that's okay. Then I let my Cricut machine cut out my text while I do a little cleaning up. And voila! I did end up cutting two different versions. One text was a little bit smaller, but it actually ended up being a bit too small, so I stuck with the larger version. I used my weeder to lift up the excess gold foil and also used it to help push down the text that needed to stay on the paper. This part is satisfying, but it always takes me a really long time. And I think the smaller the text, the more attention to detail you need to use. I do see people working on larger text and they remove it so easy, but for me that's just not the case. Now that that excess foil is off, I'm using my weeder for what it's actually supposed to be used for, which is to weed out that foil where there needs to be negative space in the O's or the A's, etc. I finally have that ready and now I'm adding liquid latex onto my bottom side of the tray to be able to do a layer on the top since I do need to allow some time for the liquid latex to dry a bit. Once the liquid latex has dried, I propped my future tray up onto small cups and I'm using a small Dremel tool to try and drill out some of those air bubbles that I was previously talking about. I wiped away the residue and used a thin wooden stick to try and dig out that residue that was left in those holes. Now it's time for me to place on the handles and I usually like to place on the handles in more than just one layer of resin, usually at least two layers of resin so that I'm sure that it's in there good. But because I'm going to be doing it in one layer, I'm using this epoxy glue to be certain that these handles are not going anywhere. I'm sure that the handles would be fine in just one layer, but I'd always rather be safe than sorry and this glue will ensure that these handles are stuck in there. It's from Depon and is very strong and has a strong smell as well, so as always make sure that you're wearing your nitrile gloves and your respirator mask. It has a very quick work time of only 5 minutes, so I mix each part together quickly and apply it onto the bottom of the handles. And you have a few minutes to kind of adjust your handles if you're not entirely happy with their placement. And here I'm just very quickly going over some of the orange parts and the flowers with yellow acrylic paint, the same thing that I did with the coasters. Now I'm ready to add on my text and I used strong grip tape and now I'm removing the paper from that tape. and I place the text onto the tray. 
I push down the text and then remove the tape. Now that that's all set into place, I'm ready to add on my craft resin once more to do the final top coat of this tray. As always, I use my silicone makeup brush to help spread out the resin and a torch gun to pop any air bubbles. And I am just quickly going over the areas that I drilled in with that thin wooden stick because air can still get trapped in the areas that were drilled so I'm just lifting up that air. And here's the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Follow me on my Instagram, Summer Girl Designs, and my mom's Instagram, Wild Heart Resin Art.